We are here for the opening of the Four Seasons of BC featuring the members of the North Shore Artists Guild. And we have some of them here tonight. Um, I will be your host this evening. Uh, my name is Steven Snyder. I am the Communications and Gallery Coordinator for the West Vancouver Community Arts Council. And I am coming to you, uh, surrounded by the artwork in this exhibition, uh, live from the Silk Purse Arts Centre here in West Vancouver on the traditional and unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples. Uh, in particular, the Squamish Nation, the Tsleil-Waututh Nation, and the Musqueam Nation. And the Arts Council is incredibly grateful to be on these beautiful lands uh, surrounded by such majesty and incredibly grateful to our host nations and neighbors and community members and leaders for their stewardship of these lands and waters since time immemorial. And uh, these lands and waters and our relationships to them is... Uh, partially what inspired a lot of the artwork here this evening. And we are going to have a, a fantastic time talking about the artwork with the artists. We'll take a, a quick little tour of the gallery uh, to see everything up on the walls. And then everyone's gonna talk a bit about their piece in a little bit more uh, detail. Um, if you have any questions or comments for anyone here on the panel, uh, you can drop them in the chat and we will get to that a little closer to the end of the evening. So uh, we're going to turn things over uh, to uh, North Shore Artists Guild President Yana Kumi, and she's going to tell us a little bit uh, about the Guild, um, who are the ones sharing their wonderful artwork with us. Oh, sorry, Yana, could you unmute yourself? <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Uh, I'm not the um, president of the guild, I'm the exhibition director. So um, Ingrid is the, and questions for presidency is to Ingrid. Uh, so I'm just gonna give you a highlight of the guild and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the history and you will wonder why is she talking about the history and I'll tell you when I get to the part, okay? So uh, importantly, Next year is our 75th anniversary of existence. And we started in 1947 and with a small group of 12 artists led by Eileen Lowry. She had founded a painting for fun club earlier, but um, when the docent of the Vancouver Art Gallery, Jesse Font arrived on the scene, she had other ideas and she quickly uh, proposed a name change and we uh, called ourselves the West Vancouver Sketch Club. The Sketch Club uh, was founded really on um, being a professional and non-professional group of artists that came together and wanted to promote the art, promote their, their selling of paintings and um, just the, I guess the, the West Vancouver area was uh, just kind of um, being established and they just wanted to show their work and promote the arts. The yearly dues were $4 and art classes were held um, at the three month terms. And interestingly, they were taught by very well artists, known artists, Gordon Smith, Jack Shadbull, BC Binnings and other famous artists came along and taught the group. Exhibitions were regularly held, especially on the front lawn of then the um, Aquatic Center. The scholarships were established for local students, donations were made to the community groups and art books were bought for the library. Socialization were, was encouraged by starting the meetings 15 minutes earlier. So, Many organizational patterns established then, actually we still enjoy uh, remaining true to those patterns. Today, the sketch club is called the North Shore Artists Guild. We settled on the term of guild because it underscores the social connection we want to foster among members. We're mostly a painting group. Membership dues are a little bit higher than four bucks, but we still offer demos and workshops, monthly workshops. 
And these days we hold them via Zoom. And the beauty of Zoom is that we're not relegated to the local artists. We can go across Canada and we do. We still um, support the local art groups with donations. We still buy the books and we still hold our socials. We're encouraged to arrive on the scene when we met as a group um, half an hour earlier. And we still meet as a group via Zoom half an hour earlier where we can have a glass of wine if we want to. We're not relegated to cookies and tea and coffee. <laughs> so I'm just wanting to let you know if this uh, venerable organization sounds a lot like fun, join us. Um, we, you will find our particulars on the website and um, try it out. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Yana. And uh, sorry for the, the mix up in, in yours and Ingrid's titles. That was excellent. It's great to hear uh, the history of the, of the Guild. It's fantastic. And I'm uh, happy uh, that, uh, you know, since it started out in West Van, uh, you're able to continue doing uh, a, lot of, a lot of projects and exhibitions and things out here. It's wonderful. Uh, so, uh, now that we've had uh, some history on the Guild, uh, which is fascinating and should all uh, check out all the other activities that they do, uh, the link to the Guild's uh, website is actually in the description of this video. Now it's time to meet just a, a fraction of the artists in this exhibition, um, because there are 17 in total, um, but we have some of them here tonight. Uh, so. Uh, We'll have them uh, introduce themselves uh, and say just a little bit about their background and practice. So let's start alphabetically and we'll go with Elizabeth. Hey, lucky to be at the, uh, have a last name that starts with A, <laughs> I get to go first. Um, so I was born in Vancouver, um, raised in, in um, West Van, and my dad was a bit of an artist. So growing up, there was always art supplies around and uh, a lot of art was really strongly encouraged in the household, which was great for me because I loved it. Um, so I, I yeah, just continued painting. I'm, I'm primarily self-taught and just through a lot of steady practice and um, enjoying it so much. Um, you know, you learn to improve and pick up new things from lots of different people and doing workshops with um, local, you know, local artists has just been wonderful. And even um, now, as, as Jana said, with, uh, with Zoom, I mean, you can um, easily do art classes kind of almost around the world. So, um, so that's been very, very cool. Um, I'm inspired by the outdoors. I just love the outdoors. And I just feel so fortunate to be a part of the BC landscape and see it every day. And it just really, you know, the way the light hits things and the, you know, we've had a cloudy day and all of a sudden the sun comes out and it just, just very, very inspiring. And, I, and perhaps maybe because we do get a lot of rainy, cloudy days that when you do see the sun pop out, it really catches, catches my attention. And I enjoy sketching, uh, just working out designs in a sketchbook and watercolor travels so great and it's just so fresh. And acrylic, I enjoy acrylics, I, you know, can layer and it dries quickly and uh, gives you different effects and oil. I, I enjoy oil as well. It's very buttery and smooth and creamy and takes forever to dry, but that's okay. And um, so that, that's kind of a little bit, a little bit about me. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, Elizabeth. That was wonderful. You're welcome. Uh, next up uh, would be uh, Maureen Coles. Maureen, if you could uh, tell the audience a bit about yourself. Hi, um, I'm Maureen Coles. I'm a North Shore girl, um, born and raised, uh, have lived outside of the country for a few years. Um, I'm also besides a painter and I've been painting for, how old are my kids? Uh, it's gotta be 20 odd years I've been painting. And I went through Emily Carr, Cap 
college when it was Cap College, the studio arts program. And when our family moved down to Texas, I continued my art studies down there. And that's when painting really went, oh, I must do this. It just fired all kinds of things in my head. And uh, I started teaching, teaching art. And that's a lot of what inspires me is teaching. Um, I think I, the feedback I get from my students is that I'm a good teacher. Uh, and I think part of it is because I'm, I'm visually impaired, uh, which seems kind of a, an oxymoron being a painter and not seeing well, uh, but it gives me time to slow down, think about what I'm doing and how I'm translating that myself and also being able to help others translate how they're thinking, seeing, and looking at what they're painting or wanting to paint. Um, so I think that gives me um, a bit of an advantage sometimes. Um, and being you know, from British Columbia, as Liz was saying, is that look at the inspiration around us. Uh, how can we not be inspired by the beauty that's at our front door, our back door, or you know, go out and look at our windows every day of the year? And growing up next to the mountains uh, and trees, that's what's always given me a lot of inspiration in my paintings. Um, and keeps me excited. It's like, you can always see different colors and shapes and, and uh, it, it, painting the mountains and the trees and forests just makes me happy um, and you can change it. So uh, that's, that's me. <laughs> Excellent, thank you, Maureen. Um, next up, um, Darlene Jacques. Darlene, could you tell us uh, a little bit about yourself? There, okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was clicking the wrong little uh, unmute sign. Um, I'm not a um, British Columbia girl. I'm actually a Saskatchewanite. And uh, living on the prairies is a little bit different than living in the beautiful, uh, lush, foresty uh, area of British Columbia. So I've, uh, my background is in interior design. I had my own interior decorating business for a number of years and also worked in new home sales and uh, show home decorating, real estate. So basically my artistic in endeavors evolved around the you know, housing industry, the decorating industry. And uh, you know, of course, like every other little girl, when they're young, they like to paint and draw and do crafty things. And I was no different in that way. And uh, that didn't necessarily uh, evolve to making me an artist, but eventually uh, I found my, my roots back to my, my uh, interest in art as a youngster. Um, it wasn't actually until after my four children graduated from school and university that I finally found space in my life to, to follow my artistic interests. Uh, it was actually one of those big birthdays that comes at that retirement point where when my youngest daughter said, but mom, what would you really like for your birthday? And so I had to pause and give it some thought. And, uh, you know, after some pretty serious thought, I said, you know what I really like? I would like to take art classes. Mm -hmm. So that's when my art career really started. And uh, within a week, I was in uh, weekly art classes at a beautiful studio in Calgary. And I attended uh, uh, once a week for the first year and then twice a week, as soon as there was some vacancy that I could go in at least twice a week. Um, I, I moved to Vancouver eight years ago now, and it was upon my moving to Vancouver that I saw the opportunity with the, the beautiful number of art opportunities and the artists were so active here that I joined the North Shore Art Guild, which is an absolutely fantastic group. I also belong to the Federation of Canadian Artists here, which many other uh, of the members here belong to as well and uh, the Vancouver Art Guild. So I get lots of opportunity to paint. Uh, I'm self-taught as uh, Liz mentioned she was uh, with taking a lot of courses and so forth and continuously just 
upgrading my practice, learning new techniques, trying new things, exploring, and that's basically it. So I love what I do. I'm really inspired by seascapes. And that was part of the reason that I did move to British Columbia because the ocean is kind of my thing. So thank you. That's great. Thank you, Darlene. Uh, next, um, Kim, Kim Rosen, could you introduce yourself to everyone watching? Hi, uh, good evening, everybody. And um, thank you for uh, hosting our show um, and putting on this event this evening. Um, I, I am South African originally. I was born in Johannesburg and I went to university in South Africa. I studied fine art and art history. Um, and I, uh, after uh, a few years after I finished university, I uh, moved to London, UK. Uh, I was there for about 15 years. Um, I got married while I was there and my husband and I moved to Seattle. Uh, we were there for about 10 years and we've been here for, we moved up here about 11 years ago. So I've, I'm a bit of a um, traveler. <laughs> um, and I, I sort of, cons I didn't have a brilliant experience studying fine art at university. I felt it was a very subjective experience. Uh, Kind of education, but I loved art history. Um, and I, I, uh, after I left university, I worked for Sotheby's in Johannesburg, and then subsequently for Sotheby's in the UK. And I think <clears> that <throat> I always felt that my that art history gave me a grounding and appreciation uh, for just for loving art. I mean, I, I also, like some of the other speakers, I dabbled in art ever since I can remember. I went to art classes as a little kid. I, um, it, it just I had a fabulous art teacher when I was uh, probably around 10 years old, and she just really was a very inspiring woman. And I, so I always wanted to do something to do with art. Um, so I think I had an interim period of working and not painting until, uh, oh, I could go into great detail <laughs> with my history, but um, uh, at one point I started studying architecture in London because I had a very inspiring boss who was an architect. And uh, the one of my, professors at the college in London said to me, you know, I never realized that you had done art before. And I, I realized then that actually I never painted because I had such a negative experience with one of my professors at university that I actually just shut down. So it actually, I, you know, I dabbled in art when I moved to Seattle. I did some set design and I did some textile design and always everything I've always done has really been to do with art but when I finally moved up to Vancouver I sort of just painted solidly and that's just all I do now and I my inspiration it comes from everything around me actually I just um all the way where I live the things I do it's usually I think there's a sort of a quirky take on subjects that I it, that's what my inspiration is, something that's a, just a little off from the norm. And so that's, I, I, I love being here. I love the landscape. I love everything about Vancouver. And so I, uh, I love painting here. So that's my story. That's a great story. Thank you, Kim. Uh, and then our, our final artist uh, joining us this evening uh, who's part of the exhibition, is Celinda Stevens. Celinda, could you introduce yourself to everyone watching? Hi, how are you? Good evening, everybody. My name is Celinda Stevens, and I am absolutely delighted to be here and be part of this exciting group of artists, and of course, be part of the exhibition as well. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about me. I was born in Mexico. I was born in Acapulco, Mexico. Uh, I grew up into a family of artists and 
musicians. So uh, art was always welcome and supported in my family. So I feel almost like if there was a seed planted in me at the very beginning and it just kind of grew through the years and, and allowed me to be an artist. However, life happens and you have children and you have life and you kind of retract from what you're doing, but you always come back to it just like I did. Um, uh, I lived in um, Canada for many years, or the best part of my life has been in Vancouver, where my focus has been my family and my art. And through the years in Canada, I've had the joy of working with my sister, Ligia Indra, that is a very, very accomplished artist in the United States. She lives in Virginia. And we have joined forces a few times to do private presentations for corporate clients and they have been very successful. So uh, she has been my inspiration in many ways and I'm so grateful to have her in this journey. Um, my art, uh, I do mainly oils. I was trained in oils um, and, and I have been doing a lot of paintings through the years. The uh, painting that was selected for the McDonald Realty calendar is an oil painting. It's um, 40 by 60. And it's a painting of Vancouver that um, has the mountains in the background. And um, acrylics has have been also um, something that I have been experimenting with. However, acrylics is not really my focus. <laughs> I moved on. Uh, I tried pastels and I tried the sketching and I tried other things. But then I discovered something that I was always trying not to do because I was horrified of all of these. You do something and it comes out something different. And that is watercolor. Watercolor is very challenging. And uh, in the last few years, I have been experimenting with watercolor and I am in love with watercolor. So little by little, I have been uh, introducing more and more time into my practice. And now I do lots of oils and maybe a little bit more watercolors. So a little bit of everything and I'm really loving it. My inspiration is very easy to be inspired in British Columbia with everything that is around you. You have so much nature and you know, everything around you is, is an inspiration. And um, we are very, very fortunate to just kind of look around and there it is. However, a lot of my inspiration too comes from everyday life, like kids playing kite in the park or um, bird watching, or maybe uh, walking on a trail in the mountains of BC, like, you know, every, every, things that you do every day and then I like to to portray that in my paintings. Um, my style is mainly realistic. I have, um, you know, I, I, I do a lot of detail in my paintings. However, every now and then, especially working with watercolors, I allowed myself to be moody a little bit and paint outside the line. So that's okay. It's an artist's expression and we're allowed to do that. The painting that is on the exhibition, um, it's, um, it's called Daydream at uh, Deep Cove Marina. This painting was one of two that I submitted for the, um, for the juries to select. And I was lucky enough that both of my paintings were selected and the other one was actually printed in the calendar. I am extremely honored and very, very humbled to to have that honor and among so many very, very talented artists. So thank you for choosing me. Um, the, the daydream of the Deep Cove Marina was kind of like, um, like a serendipity kind of thing because I was at the piers in, at the marina in Deep Cove and I was with my camera as I'm usually with my camera taking pictures of everything, driving everybody crazy. But um, I was taking pictures of everything around me, the mountains, the trees, the beach, the boats. And then all of a sudden I looked down 
And I see this distorted figure of a boat just dancing for me and calling me and just inviting me to participate in that. So I took a picture of that and ran with it. I went home and I painted it. And, and I was very, very pleased. I still am. It's a beautiful painting. It has a lot of movement and, and it's, it's a daydream. It's not real. It's there. It has movement and, and it's not there. So I love that painting and what it means. It's a beautiful day of the marina. And, you know, you, you daydream. You want to go on a trip. You want to take, take away and go. Uh, lately, uh, I have joined um, the International Watercolor Society of Canada, and I am very, very pleased to have done that. Um, I, I want to participate, and I have already participated in competitions for watercolor, as well as being on their online um, galleries. I am a very active member on the North Shore Art, um, Arts Council and participating in all of the programs that they offered as well. And, um, um, you know, just, just to name a few, I, I've been participating in the art uh, rental for a few years. And I have been lucky that I have been selected for a few years as well, because this is a jury, um, a jury show. Um, and now for the last couple of years, um, unfortunately, since COVID has started, I have been a very active member of the North Shore Artists Guild. However, I know a lot of people and I don't know anybody because everything has been on Zoom. I had the pleasure of meeting Ingrid the other day and I nearly died. She is alive. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, it, was, it was a real pleasure to, to meet her and I'm sure that it will be a real pleasure to meet all of you that I haven't met yet. That's it for me. If anybody has any questions for me, uh, I'll give you my email. You can contact me at artworkbycelinda at gmail.com. And I'll be very happy to be in touch with you. Thank you. Thank you, Selinda. That was great. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone, for uh, giving us uh, those little uh, bits of uh, information about yourself. That was, that was wonderful. Um, can hear a lot of uh, everything you said makes sense seeing your artwork, you know, and it's actually great to see behind a lot of you um, more examples of your artwork. It's, it's pretty cool to get a peek in like that. Um, and as, um, as had been said earlier, we have uh, another uh, panelist on us with us, uh, Ingrid Goodsman, the uh, president of the North Shore uh, Artist Guild. So she's, she's here hanging out. <laughs> yeah, um, Stephen, can I sort of say a few words? Please. I hadn't entirely planned, but I have to say, like, I, I want to thank the West Van Community Arts Council, obviously, for doing this in, in conjunction with us, this show. But this evening, Wow, I'm sorry, I'm just sort of blown away. Like Celinda said, we've, we've had two years, well, year and a half, almost two years on Zoom. Some of us have never personally met before. Um, when we've had our meetings before, you know, we actually put a big focus on the social side of things. We're a community of artists that we're really focused on social. And I don't think we always share what our inspirations are and, and who we really are as artists. So I'm beyond humbled right now. You have no idea. I'm sort of like fighting the tears back a little bit to understand that much deeper about who we are as a guild. And here I am, the president, learning this. So thank you. <laughs> and I, I hope the audience is, is feeling the same. The, uh, the depth from us is, is actually pretty amazing. So thank you. That's great. Thank you, Ingrid. That was lovely. And I think, I think that is definitely coming across to the audience. So a little bit of uh, nuts and bolts about the exhibition. Um, as we stated earlier, uh, it's called The Four Seasons of BC and it is at the Silk Purse Art Center, which is where I am. Um, and so it will be up here uh, from now. Today was our first day that we were open. So people came in and saw it and we're very happy that they, that they stopped by. Um, and it is running until December the 19th and you can come and see it Wednesdays through Sunday uh, from noon till four. Um, check out all these fantastic pieces up close and personal. 
Um, and to learn a little bit more about how this exhibition came together, because it's kind of a, a cool story, um, we'll turn it over to uh, Yana Kumi again. And while she's talking, um, we'll start a little tour of the exhibition so you can see uh, all of the pieces. And then after that, we'll talk to each of our artists about their individual work. Okay, thank you again, Stephen. Uh, how this show came about, very interesting. Uh, because McDonald Realty approached the Guild very early in April 2021 with a proposal to furnish them about 50 images from which the company would choose 12 images for their promotional calendar. The board saw this really as a wonderful opportunity to show the work of our member artists. So we agreed to transfer the images to them by early May. Of course, we deliberated uh, some more behind the scenes, how we were going to do this, but ultimately we decided that number one, we needed a person to lead this initiative. And it was really easy to, uh, to agree that Wanda Doyle uh, was the woman for the job. She has a long history with the Guild, has led projects before and knew the members. Secondly, how to choose the works. We decided quickly that we should have an external jury of distinguished local artists to evaluate specifically uh, what work was submitted. And ultimately we termed this the calendar project. So within a short month, we had 151 paintings submitted by 72 of our members. We had set up a jury comprised of three well-known jurors from the outside of the guild and produced a list of 49 images which sent to the realty company. They decided their favorites. I think every agent that they have um, was able to vote and they came up with 12 images. And of course, these 12 images are in the calendar. The question was then, what um, were we going to do with what we thought was a stunning show? So our president, um, Ingrid Glitzman, approached the West Vancouver Community Art, Arts Council, and uh, here we are. That is in a capsule what happened, but behind the scenes, it was to get these artists to submit to a jury in sufficient number to make the best selection possible. Simply put, artists do not like their work to um, go before a jury. It's nerve wracking. Uh, I did not submit to the jury as I was already in a jury competition. And I can attest that uh, when I made the decision to enter that jury, I was a basket case. So I know how difficult it is. Just a few words, if I may, to the, those volunteers which make all these things happen. Our guild is a community of members and to make things work requires a lot of people to volunteer. I've already mentioned Wanda Doyle, who stick handled the jury process, oversaw the submission process, opened up her studio to get the work photographed for the calendar submission and managed the interaction with Stephen here today. Without volunteers like Wanda, things would not get done. I also want to thank the artists who are part of the show, the artists whose work was rated the highest and then accepted into the show. It's a beauty. And our thanks to all of us who entered the jury. Um, I do also want to acknowledge our members who work hard as, at their craft, as I think we now know take workshops and carve out time in their busy lives to paint. Last but not least, our thanks to the West Vancouver Community Arts Council and you Stephen in particular for hosting us and making possible this wonderful opportunity to show and talk about her work. Thank you so much.
Thank you, uh, Hiana. That was uh, that was great to hear all of that background. I've heard it before, but it was uh, it was it was great for everyone else to 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 hear that. It's and it's a, a fantastic calendar too. Um, it looks really good. There's beautiful paintings, um, and uh, these paintings on display are also. Uh, just stunning and breathtaking. This video is uh, is not doing them uh, any justice. You really have to come on in to this person person to uh, to check these out and see all of the amazing details and textures and tones and and, and colors and and all of the elements of the pieces. It's uh it's quite breathtaking. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, thanking your members for all of the uh, taking the time to do to do the work, um, not just uh, putting together exhibitions or other projects, but actually uh, just doing the painting itself, doing that actual work. And I think that's that's important. I think all the artists definitely, I, I agree with you, should be uh, thanked and, and commended for for putting that effort and time and, and passion and blood, sweat, and tears into something that. Uh, really elevates uh, someone's day and, and can change people's minds um, and have them look at things in a new way just by coming in and looking at a painting. Yeah. And as you can see, as we've been going through this, there's a wide variety of, of styles and media, um, sizes, uh, subject matter. Um, I know it's all... Um, you know, scenes from around British Columbia, but there's like, there was this garden just down the street, actually from where the silk purse that we're looking at, you know, and there's, there was uh, some, some boats in a marina, there were mountains and lakes and there's uh, some urban scenes, you know, it's, it's, it's really great to see such, such diversity in this show. And as, as, uh, as mentioned before, besides the amazing artists that are with us tonight, there were uh, there are 17 artists on display in full that you're getting a chance to see. I'll just uh, go down the list of everyone else uh, who's exhibiting this fantastic exhibition. Uh, there's Elizabeth Austin, Anne-Marie Calder, Sonny Cho, Maureen Coles, Lucy Collings, Denise D'Angelo, Wanda Doyle, Edmi Faucant, Julie Fox, Hans Gray, Cheryl Jacobson, Darlene Jacques, Rita Peroni, Kim Rosen, Farina Samari, Celinda Stevens, and Joanne Unra. And it was the final piece, this beautiful, beautiful still life of these peaches, which we just couldn't couldn't quite fit in the gallery because there were so many amazing pieces. But we had this great, uh, this great, beautiful piece by Joanne Unra at the at the other entrance that you can come on in and see. Excellent, awesome. That was great to see everything, um, and great to hear from all of you. And we're gonna hear from. Uh, you a bit more in just a few seconds. Uh, just reminding everyone, if you have any questions or comments for our artists this evening, drop them in the chat. So uh, let's, uh, let's go a little deeper into uh, some of the pieces here uh, in the exhibition. Let's, uh, let's shake things up. Let's start with Darlene. I'm gonna pull up your piece and if you wanna talk a bit about it, that'd be great. Okay, thank you, that's lovely. Um, okay, I was asked to um, give a little bit of information on what inspired me to uh, paint this particular piece. And uh, this piece was inspired by a visit that I uh, made to the Kelowna area, uh, visiting a friend who lives out in the 
um, countryside and she has a home that overlooks this valley. And uh, she owns the vineyard that is depicted in this picture on the right hand side with the, the lines running, running sort of to the left. But what intrigued me was the vintage old barn that kind of acts as if it stands guard over this beautiful vineyard. And so I kind of studied the picture after I took a very simple photo with my iPhone. And what I loved was the, the lines and the layers and the lines of the hills and the lines of the vineyard and the lines of the grass in the, in the foreground. Um, so I just found it was interesting. They all seemed to sort of hug around this beautiful uh, old barn, which interestingly enough, houses the equipment for the vineyard. And uh, to this day, I, I actually have not entered the barn to see what uh, equipment is actually in there. So that's still a, kind of a mystery to me. Um, normally I paint in a more of a realistic style, but as of uh, the last oh, couple of years, I've started painting uh, by the influence that a couple of the group of seven artists have had on my uh, art practice. And that is Lauren Harris and uh, J.H. McDonald. And uh, so I've uh, kind of, you know, gone a little bit in that style, that simplistic style, which I find, um, you know, kind of leads the eye inward to that barn. When I, um, you know, started painting this, it was going to be a realistic uh, painting. And then as it evolved, I changed my style and went into the more contemporary uh, abstract look. For me, uh, painting a picture uh, is mostly about the feeling. And this particular uh, uh, reference photo that I uh, took made me feel really happy. It made me feel uh, good about the, the contents, good about the simplistic lines, good about the fact that it was, uh, you could see into the distance, which to me is very peaceful. Um, basically, you know, in painting this, and just not to elaborate a whole bunch, I still like to you know, keep certain fundamental techniques in line and make sure that uh, you know, I do have some kind of a focal point and that I capture the light and that I've got lines that are, are varied, but yet have, have some uh, congruency to them and so forth. And um, basically um, that's what was the inspiration for my painting. Um, it's always about feelings. What kind of a feeling do I want to portray? And uh, I'm finding that if I allow my painting to evolve as my intuitive uh, direction leads me, then I end up with a, a, a piece that I find pleasing and that I feel as though I've really, you know, set some kind of a feeling with it. So try not to be too structured, not to follow what's actually in the reference photo and just using my artistic creativity to let it, let it flow as it goes and uh, never really knowing how it's gonna end up. So that's kind of it. <laughs> and I, I hope that this painting makes people feel relaxed. And um, you know, that was my intention. That's great. Thank you, Darlene. Yeah, no, there's definitely a lot of a lot of freedom and 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 excitement happening in that piece. Thank you. Awesome. I'm so excited to hear more from everyone about their about their artwork. This is great. Next, uh, let's go with how about Kim? Why don't we uh, Why don't we hear from Kim about her piece? So my piece is a painting of the community gardens, uh, uh, the Argyle Community Gardens, which is literally just down the road from the Silk Purse. Um, and I have a plot, which is the one on the uh, right, <laughs> with the flowers sort of bun bunched up, uh, the pink flowers. And um, we got a, a, a signed up for a community plot here and we got it about uh, four years ago. And I absolutely love it. It is a very peaceful, 
exquisite bit of land because it just, uh, uh, you can see at the end of the pathway, um, it's, uh, there's a wall and the two, there's a bench or two benches on the other side of the wall and it, it looks right out onto the water and over to Stanley Park and then over to the uh, west side of Vancouver. Um, it's just, it's such a peaceful commune with nature there that just watching things grow and just um, it really has always provided me with a just a fantastic connect, connection with the earth and nature. And I painted many paintings there of this particular scene and sometimes just of our plot, sometimes of my husband harvesting his garlic in the plot, sometimes of the neighbor's plot. So there's just every season and every year it just provides me with new fodder for my painting. Um, and I don't know, uh, I don't know if you would be able to see it from this, but I, this is painted in acrylic. I, I generally paint in acrylics and oils sometimes. And I usually paint on a black background. And then um, I start working in the front front of my scene and I paint what's there and then I I work my way back into space and I I feel that it's very for me it's very important to have a direction that really draws the viewer into the space that I'm trying to create um, and I think if I if I paint an object um, like some of the flowers they will automatically be outlined by the black background. And then whatever I paint behind them um, will just encourage the eye to move back in space. So I, um, this has got a very central focus, obviously, with a pathway to the waterway. But uh, I usually try and lead the viewers around things in my paintings. And um, this painting is firstly quite meaningful because the house on the right and the tree, which I absolutely always loved that tree, but they've both been removed. Um, I didn't mind them taking the house away because now we get sun all day and it has done wonders for all the farmers and gardeners at the plots because our, this last year when the house was removed, it was taken off in, uh, during the summer, but we all had the most, uh, you know, wonderful things growing there because we had so much sun. <laughs> so, um, but I was very sad to see the tree go because it was very sculptural and just lovely. Uh, and the pink flowers in my, the tall ones that are, uh, have the string around them, uh, well, they also have a bit of a story because we found the first couple of years we had the plot Unfortunately, a lot of our vegetables got stolen, which is a, a common complaint with some of the gardeners there. But uh, people seem to think that being a community garden, the community can help themselves <laughs> to some of the, the produce. Um, so I decided that I was going to plant things that people wouldn't want to eat. So I planted these, I think they're milkweed and they're meant to attract butterflies. Um, and uh, so, and I also planted a lot of greens. So I was very fortunate that the people at the plots next to mine planted some pretty flowers <laughs> that I paint because my, my plot is very green. Um, and anyway, so that's the story of this painting. And um, I, it's very colorful and uplifting and it signifies spring and produce and, um, yeah. I just, I, I enjoyed painting it tremendously. Yeah. That's it, I don't know if anyone has any questions. That was great, Kim, thank you. Yeah, there, there's definitely a lot of life in there. It's very, uh, a very lively piece and you can tell it's very, very lived in that space. You captured that very well. Thank you. Awesome. Next, uh, let's have, um, let's, Celinda, why don't we talk a bit more about your piece? We talked about it a little bit already, but let's hear a bit more. Well, I'm going to be very brief because I already gave you the story. <laughs> but 
I can tell you this is uh, an oil painting. It's 24 by 24. Um, like I said before, this is, this is just a daydream for me. It's a reflection of a boat. I don't know whose boat it is. It was just something that called my attention was walking at the marina. But what I really, really, um, I'm very proud of this painting is because during the jury um, uh, marking, it came to 8.7, which I thought it was pretty high. And, and I'm very, very proud of my work. And um, I, you know, I, I like the colors. I like the, the movement. I like everything about that painting. And, and, um, and it's, you know, I hope that you enjoy it too. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I really, I really don't have very much to add. It was just a beautiful day of the marina, and I loved it, and I have fun memories of it, Excellent. and a painting to remember. <laughs> totally. No, <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, well. uh, next, let's hear from Elizabeth about uh, about your piece. Okay, great. Thanks, Stephen. Um, first of all, I'm honored to have the piece chosen. That was. Um, um, just delightful for me. And um, I, the subject matter, I just absolutely love these little sea stacks that um, are actually located all over the world, but the, some of the West Coast ones being close to the rainforest have just the most beautiful foliage on them. And, you know, just sort of seeing them for me is just kind of touching the surface when you get down to sketching them and all the rock formations and the colors of the foliage on them is, is really getting to know them a little more intimately. And, and when I think of these sea stacks, the thought of them being all on their own, a lot of times surrounded by water and the weather conditions that hit them out on the West Coast, and they still keep standing. They, they take a lot, of, a lot of beating and I think they have in themselves an essence of, of courage that, uh, I find very appealing. Um, there's many of them are, are unnamed because they're just so teeny. I mean, some of them are, but a lot of them aren't, but they stand strong as sentinels. And as Darlene alluded, which I thought was interesting to her barn that sort of oversaw uh, the property. To me, these little, these little sea stacks appear to be protecting their territory as well and um, find it very appealing. Uh, they often remind me of um, the statues on Easter Island. And um, I can see how they could become even idols of worship or at least um, idols of admiration. I know I admire them a lot. Um, and I'll sometimes draw from um, different photos that I've taken and um, sometimes the, the beach or the rock formations are a little bit um, different and they'll be a composite. Um, and other, other paintings that I do are sort of exactly as, as I see them, depending on the light and the tide and how the beach looks. And kind of as Kim was alluding, you like to lead your uh, viewer through the painting. And sometimes I can do that with the clouds or the rock formations on the beach. And I think that's about it for that one. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Elizabeth. It's, it's interesting to hear everyone's interpretations of the, of the scenes they're looking at and how sometimes, you know, they kind of get uh, personified to a degree because we have such a, such a connection to what we're seeing. You know, we can imbue uh, a real spirit to it. Uh, and then finally, uh, Maureen, we're going to get a look at your piece. Well, this is great going last. <laughs> get to sort of get ideas <laughs> of what I should say. So thank you. Um, this painting actually was inspired from a photo I took uh, time up the um, Duffy Lake Road, which if you're not familiar with it, it's between Mount Curry or Pemberton and Lillooet, the one that's closed right now, unfortunately. And um, Joffrey Lake is sort of right down at the base of that mountain, um, sort of an inspiration of Joffrey Mountain. And uh, we have a family cabin that's down at the other end of Duffy Lake 
uh, on this side, on the Whistler side at Lillooet Lake. And so it, it's a really special place for me. There's lots of beautiful mountains, the, the lupins and the fireweed. And uh, it just, the majesty of the mountains around there take my breath away a lot of times. And when I had taken this photo, it was actually on our honeymoon, my husband, my honeymoon. And um, we had a Mustang at the time. And he said, let's go up this road. Okay. And it's a logging road. We're in a Mustang. We did that kind of thing. And we got up there and there, and it just happened to be the wildflowers are in bloom and there was the mountain. And it's like, oh my goodness, this is stunning. And I've not, we've tried to go up other times to see if I can get the, the lupins and the fireweed and the Indian paintbrush at bloom. And it's, if you've ever been in the Alpine, you know that it's just a very short window that it's open and um, I've not been able to capture it again. So uh, different flowers at different times, but uh, this particular time it was like, wow, well, yay, it just sang. So, and I, this is acrylic um, and this one's a 12 by 16. Uh, so it's a, a nice size to put in a lot of different places. And I tend to, when I'm doing some of my representational work, really blot the paint on. So when you come by and see this painting, you'll see there's, it's quite built up. There's a lot of globs of paint in the, the little flowers down in the bottom there. But um, like I said, uh, I've lived by the mountains most of my life and uh, they, they make me happy. They really do. And uh, they kind of make me feel small in this big world in, in a very good way. So that's about my painting. Wonderful, thank you, Maureen. That was that was great. Yeah, and and there really is a lot of a lot of paint on that on that little canvas. <laughs> it's pretty great when you get to come and see it. All all the textures. It's it's pretty wonderful. Awesome. That was that was amazing, everyone. Thank you so much. That was your insights have been inspiring. It's it's really great. I'm glad that we were able to to hear this. Um, and just a reminder for everyone watching, uh, if you have any comments or questions, now would be the time to, uh, to get them in. Um, I'll read off a few that we already have. Um, this is great. We've got hello from Mexico uh, <laughs> from uh, Ilana Pintos, which is great. Thank you for being here uh, from Mexico and watching. And then we've got a, a hi, uh, a Gabby from Alexander Tejada says hi to Gabby. Uh, That's my family too. <laughs> excellent. That's awesome. My granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a, a bravo, Celinda from uh, Silvia Ramirez. Yeah, lots of lots of family support tonight. That's my friend from Mexico. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah, so if you've got anything to say, drop it in now. Yeah, so I'll just uh, reiterate again to everyone, um, if you want to uh, come in and see the show, uh, it's on at the Silk Purse Art Center. We're right next to John Lawson Park um, here in West Vancouver, and we're open Wednesdays through Sundays from 12 to 4. Yeah, so we'd love you to come on in and see it. And uh, if you want to know more about the North Shore Artists Guild, um, there's a link to their website in the description of this video. So please uh, check out what they're doing because they also have another exhibition on right now, an online uh, exhibition uh, full of stunning pieces, just as stunning as these. So you should definitely check that out too. It's one thing, you know, about the North Shore Artists Guild. I've been a member of the North Shore Artists Guild for about 14 years now. And uh, I, like I said, I've lived in, on the North Shore most of my life. We left the country for a short period of time, came back, and I was looking for somewhere to connect. I had been to an art, uh, belonged to an art club in the States, and I really needed that here. And I finally got in with the, the North Shore Artists Guild. And what's beautiful about it is it's for people, whether they, they call themselves an artist or they're a hobbyist or they simply appreciate creating. And when you get in that space, whether this last nearly two years we've been online or when we were live or when we have our other get together groups um, that are COVID safe, et cetera, 
it's being in that space with other people who have creative energy and just being able to share that energy. And as you can see, all of the art that you've seen in this show, it's very diverse. And as you've heard from everybody, also coming from very different backgrounds, different, different approaches to our art practice, different education of our art practice. And it's, it's very inclusive and can only support your growth and evolution as uh, an art maker, not necessarily an artist, but an art maker, whatever you wanna call yourself, whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, it's uh, a very nurturing, supportive group. And I think with all the different things that we have going on in the North Shore Artists Guild, uh, whether it's our paint groups or workshops or our demos that we have, it gets your mind firing and thinking um, into, into different forms of art. So it, it's been very supportive and very, um, very important for me for the past many, many years. So I encourage anyone that if you're even thinking about it or considering, oh, maybe, if that maybe's there, yes, absolutely. Come join us. We're, we're a nice group. <laughs> well said, Maureen. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. That's, I, I would agree. It's a, it's a great group of artists. Everyone that I've met who's part of the guild, they're, they're all very passionate about their work and, uh, and, and pretty pleasant to chat with as evidence <laughs> this evening. <laughs> Looks like that's about it for our chat. Everyone, I guess, is a little a little shy. Um, so I think um, I think we can uh, wrap things up. If anyone has any final thoughts they would like to share, um, feel free to do so now. I'm I just want to say, sorry. Go ahead, Charlie. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I just want to say, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> go, go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to thank you, Stephen, for putting this all together and giving us this wonderful opportunity to, to share our art and explain a little bit about our art. It's uh, definitely an opportunity that many of us have never had. And so it's much appreciated. Thank you. I feel yeah. the same. Thank you very much. Yeah. And thank you. Have, yeah. Yeah. I was and just going to say online, exactly the same thing. Yes. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for the opportunity of being all together. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's art in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this thank online so platform is uh, honestly having had to do this once a couple of times. It, it's a lot less intimidating doing it here than is 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 my dress at the right length and do I have a run in my pantyhose? Um, <laughs> it's actually much nicer doing this. So thank you. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, and behalf of the guild and for all the attendees that joined for the, this open house, what a, a wonderful opportunity. And thank you, Stephen. Thank you to Jennifer, too, and and uh, our volunteers and our artists who, who pulled it together, because that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it was uh, a wonderful collaboration um, between the Arts Council and the North Shore Artists Guild. Um, yeah, we're, we're so thrilled with this. Yeah. Thank you to everyone uh, who showed up tonight, all these amazing artists to talk about everything and, uh, and to Ingrid and Yana and Wanda who helped put this whole thing together. Um, and thanks to all the artists who couldn't be here with us tonight, but who have uh, shared their amazing artwork with us. And thank you to everyone watching. Uh, please uh, come on in in person to see it uh, for yourself. It's a, it's a spectacular, spectacular show. Um, so with that, uh, we'll sign off and uh, a good evening. So have a pleasant night, everyone, and uh, stay inspired and stay creative. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody.